I'm Jeff Blankenberg, Chief Technical Evangelist for Alexa, and we're here today at the Ascot Racecourse to talk to them about their Alexa skill. We're gonna dive into things about their voice design, some of the back-end systems they're using, and some of the ways it's improved their processes here at the racecourse. Let's go check it out. Paul, thank you so much for having me here today. As part of your roles and responsibilities, uh, obviously Alexa probably had to affect in some ways, the way that things operate inside your kitchens and the restaurants uh, across Ascot. Can you tell me a little bit about how that works? Within the box, um, there is a, a pamphlet, and that really describes a step-by-step -step process of how to use Alexa and the benefits of Alexa to our guests for the day. So the prompts are there to show these are the kind of prompts to, to wake up Alexa and to request services, be it for merchandise, to food and beverage, or even betting as well. There has to be a good amount of data that comes from that as well, right? Uh, learnings and understandings. Is, is there anything that's been surprising or new to you as you've looked at that? It's an interesting byproduct when we actually analyze the data. Um, with a menu in the room and, and Alexa there, they just seem to feel freer and we've seen an increased food and beverage ordering and our average spend is nearly doubled typically for, the, for a box with no catering which is, wow. a, which is a financial result beyond yeah. what we expected. Alexa, can we order some food? Sending someone to help with your food order. Aaron, thanks so much for meeting with me today. So I know you and your team at Autico put together this skill for Ascot and I'd love to kind of unpack the process and the, the development that went into it. First few initial meetings was really just talking about how we can improve overall operations at ASCA. And it was a lot of discovery and a lot of trying to understand how using things like voice technology can improve the overall experience for, for, for guests at ASCA. So you get some introductions, you get some ideas about how their business works. Where do you go from there? At a place like ASCA, as you can imagine, so many use cases for voice technology. And it was really a case of working with some of the team here at ASCA to try and identify which use cases would deliver the most value. And that's how we started, really. We started by demonstrating some initial value through very simple use cases of the voice technology and then building on it from there. How many intents does a skill like ASCOT have? So it has around 20. Okay. Some of them are made very obvious. So things like being able to ask for food and drinks and make requests for assistance. Some of them are not so obvious and they're actually just things that people might think about asking the devices naturally. Alexa, when is the next race? Okay, the next race is in 32 minutes at 5.25 p.m. Alexa, tell me something about the history of Ascot. We came up with some interesting facts that we found about Ascot and then we kind of approved it with them, but that's something that they can control as well. Through the Audico skill and the Audico platform, they can manage that content. And I like that. So we're not just talking about a skill. You've also built them a back-end system that allows them to handle their content management. And that's, that's where we realized that building a skill is the interface for end users to be able to interact with the technology. But building a platform around it was really important to, to kind of complete the end-to-end -end voice experience. Yeah. So I would imagine you have a database that lives someplace uh, you've built them a web interface that lets them see what's inside their database. And then are you just using a simple like AWS Lambda behind the scenes to, to manage the interactions for your skill? So you're right. We have, obviously, a database, a back-end microservice architecture. We have the front-end web application. And we make use of quite a lot of different AWS services for all of those sorts of things. So should we go take a look at the demo? Yeah, sure. All right. So this is the Audico dashboard, and this, alongside the, the skill that we developed, kind of pieces together the Audico platform. So this is the dashboard page, and this is what the staff members at Ascot would generally be looking at. So we can segregate this view as well for the different teams at Ascot. So for example, for food and beverage, betting, and merchandising, so that they only see the information that's relevant to them. So what you can see here is a feed of requests that have come through and some information about those requests. And what I can do now is I can show you what happens when someone makes a request yeah, as well. Yeah, let's see that. So let's say it's raining outside and there's a race on, so they might want to order an umbrella. So you could say something like this to the device. Alexa, can I order an umbrella? Okay, here's Asuka. You would like to buy the umbrella, is that correct? Yes. Someone is on the way to help with your umbrella order. So as soon as the request comes through, we can see that the dashboard receives a message in real time, letting the users know that a request is available to add to the table. 
The reason why we do this is just to prevent too many requests being added to the table all at once. So if I click on this notification here, you can see that it gives some details about this request. It tells you the time of the request, some information about what they said, and most importantly, it tells you where the request came from and the status. So from this point, the different staff members in the different teams can see this request coming through and they can then choose to action this request. So let's say the shop downstairs sees this request coming through and they'd like to send someone upstairs to take them an umbrella and to take payment. So what they can do is they can mark this request as in progress and this then gets reflected across everybody else's view of the dashboard as well to stop two people going to fulfill the same request. And now let's say they're going up to the room, they've taken the umbrella to the person, they've been able to fulfill payment and the request is complete. So now they can mark it as complete and it will get removed from everybody else's dashboard as well. So this page really is focused on actioning requests that come through on the dashboard. So I have to imagine with all the data that you have behind the scenes here, there's probably some really useful analytics to go with it, right? Exactly, yeah. Throughout a race day or throughout a weekend, we collect a lot of information about the requests in the property. So in the analytics page, this is where a place like Asker can start to get insights from the data. And this sort of information wouldn't be captured anywhere else apart from through the Alexa system and through connected with the Audico backend as well. So to talk you through some of this, this first visualization you see at the top here gives you an idea of where the peaks and troughs are throughout the day of when the most activity was happening through the Alexa devices and perhaps when there was a drop off. So typically we see a lot of activity just after lunch and then there's a bit of a drop off perhaps when people have eaten their lunch and want a bit of a, a relaxing time. If I scroll down a little bit further, we can see the frequency of the different types of requests. And once again, Ascot has an idea of who their customers are, but they might not necessarily have these micro interactions of when people are talking to the device. And they might not necessarily be able to capture exactly what people want in an instinctive fashion. And this is what the Alexa and the Audico platform allow you to, to capture. And then on the right hand side, you can see a similar graph, but this tells you more about the frequency by the different locations. So once again, you can see the locations that need a lot of attention and might be using the devices in a really engaged way. And you can start to see the boxes that might need some, some attention because they perhaps haven't been engaging with the device so much. And this, this metric in the middle here is, is an interesting metric. And what this allows properties like Ascot to do is to measure the average response time to requests. So once again, the feedback that we got from, from Ascot is that this sort of information they couldn't track before, especially on such a big scale across a, a property like this. So through the use of the Audico dashboard, staff members are able to mark the requests as in progress and as complete. They can start to track metrics like this. And this is something that they can monitor over time as well. That's excellent. So this actually gives them insights that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, this was actually feedback from Ascot. This was something that they were unable and weren't even aware of before, this, this average response time. So this is the time it takes from a request being made to a request being completed. Very, very cool. Are there any other awesome features that you guys have built into this that you can share? One of the most valuable and powerful features is the announcements feature. And what this enables properties to do is to send messages to the devices. So instead of the end users communicating with the device, the venue is able to communicate directly with, with the end users. The way that Ascot have used these so far is to make promotions and to make offers to guests in the rooms. So for example, if they wanted to offer a discount on certain products at different times of the day, or if they wanted to prompt people to place their bets before a race. So do you have any ideas? Would you like to test this out at all? Yeah, I, I think it would be cool to just hear like, hey, the race will start in 15 minutes. Okay, let's give it a go. So what we can do is we can put any message that we like into this announcement, and then we can choose a location or a device to then send these messages to. It could be to one location, it could be to a whole floor, it could be to every single device. So when I create this message, our back end will then process this message and then send the message to the device. Hey, the race will start in 15 minutes. Oh, that's excellent. And I think one of the cool things about this is that for any developers that may have just seen this, this isn't something that we can do most of the time with Alexa skills, which is to get Alexa to just speak out loud. This is something that's specific to Alexa smart properties, right? Exactly, yeah. 
Through the use of Alexa Smart Properties and through the way that we've been able to integrate that with the Audico backend, it allows properties to be much more proactive with their communications with their guests and also to look at communications with their guests in a much more personalized way as well. Uh, I mean, this is really powerful. I can see how this would apply to a number of different venues and, and applications uh, across many, many industries. This is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Certainly.